I wanted to start by setting the bigger context of um, what the Local Government Innovation Network is, uh, what we set out to do, um, because there's always people who are new, uh, which is obviously great because people are very welcome um, into the network and we're always looking for new people to join as well. So I think we're up to about 350 members now, but we were set up about, uh, we set ourselves up about um, so two years ago now and the idea was always to um, bring in um, different ways of looking at local government or local kind of place stewarding um, and we wanted to find different people in and around local government who um, who kind of were passionate about it um, for who kind of innovation and doing things differently was not just part of the day job but would stay with them throughout their kind of careers so and we've had a number of different um, sessions over the two years um, and obviously COVID has challenged us to do more online, which I'm sure everyone's getting used to now. Um, so just talking a little bit about the kind of the current um, context. So obviously we're in the, the pandemic, um, we're still in it. Uh, people are working really, really hard in local governments to support communities and um, kind of incredible things have happened among the kind of the anguish and the, the, the trauma. And last time we did a kind of session where we got people just to reflect on, on how they were feeling and things that had become possible during that time. Um, but obviously the other thing that's happened in the last couple of weeks is a uh, reawakening and a greater awareness of the um, systemic racism that's uh, been part of our society for a long time. And that has been challenging and traumatic um, for many people. And there's been just lots of energy now to really start to change that. Um, but one thing I did want to say is that we've always um, uh, said that we want to make sure that this is a really, really diverse and representative place. Um, and um, honestly, looking at the kind of the list of people who are coming to say who are all wonderful, I don't think we've, we've quite lived up to that. And I just wanted to make that recognition up front. So I think that we um, should absolutely have that as a topic and, and from the, in some of the next ones. And I would also like welcome anyone who wants to um, uh, put forward a topic on um, kind of uh, black lives within local government and around the local government or other issues of equality and diversity, because I think it's just so important that we, we do talk about it and this is a good platform for it. Um, so on that note, um, I'm going to um, kind of set the context and I wanted to um, hand over to Boris, who's going to lead today's session. I think we've got about an hour and a half together with everyone. Um, and so we've got some really great speakers. So, um, yeah, with that, um, over to you, Boris. Thank you, Kat. Uh, yeah, so just to give a sense of what's, uh, what's coming for this session, um, first of all, I'm going to just go through a few slides to set the context of what we're going to be talking about. So we're saying, we're talking about, uh, you know, the title of the session is How Can Local Authorities Share Resources and Work Together, which is quite a broad title. Um, so I kind of just wanted to set a few, uh, a few slides to, um, to just um, explain what exactly we, we want to be talking about in general during the session. Um, then we're going to move on to short talks, the lightning talks uh, with three different speakers where we're going to be presenting some context and some different ways of collaboration that's already in place. Uh, we're going to be talking mostly about digital projects, um, but you know, we, we, in, the, in the later part, we can obviously discuss how that applies potentially to non-digital projects as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so we have May and Lau from, uh, from Local Digital Collaboration News at MHCLG. Uh, we have Ben Unsworth from Buckinghamshire Council and then Martin Evans from Unboxed. Um, so they're going to be having just very short talks to give you um, just a sense of how things can be done. Um, after that, we're going to be moving into a short workshop -y part where we're going to be exploring some you know, barriers, enablers, and opportunities for um, enhanced collaboration between local authorities. Uh, so what are we, what do we want to talk about, right? So just to uh, first define a little bit more what we mean by collaboration. So there's different types of collaboration that, uh, you know, people can engage in um, from, I guess you, you can map that onto a uh, onto a you know kind of scale from less sharing to more sharing, whereas you know less engaged collaboration might be things like just networking, meeting others, 
uh, that face similar challenges. Uh, and then you can, you know, with those other people that you're collaborating with, you can start uh, sharing things like you can, you know, sh share the knowledge of projects, tools, resources. You can start sharing resources on projects and you can move all the way to actually um, having shared delivery of projects, right? So there's different types of collaboration you can get involved in. I think the projects we're going to be talking about today are probably aiming to be more on the right side of the scale, so slightly more engaged collaboration if possible. Um, and that's partly because there might be bigger payoffs when you do that. Uh, so why collaborate? I think these things have been explored um, in various sessions before, but um, obviously there's you know, more efficient use of resources that uh, you can uh, gained through that. Uh, there's increased buying ability to apply for more funding, for example. We've seen local authorities work together to apply for you know, bigger, bigger grants, for example. Um, you can, by collaborating, you can identify and scale good existing solutions, uh, or you can work together towards long-lasting systemic change, right? So that's like a slightly um, grander goal. So those are all quite different, um, quite different, I guess, goals and, and things to aim for. Um, and I think one thing that's particularly relevant to this group is uh, collaborative innovation, right? So when, when we're collaborating, it doesn't necessarily mean we're collaborating with innovation in mind, but actually uh, collaboration is a very, very essential part of, of uh, innovation and particularly in the public sector, um, you know, there have been things uh, written about uh, the need for multi-actor collaboration. So to involve not just collaboration between different public sector, sector organizations, but potentially also involving private sector and other, other organizations to kind of share the knowledge and have different perspectives on things. Um, and I think in, in this particular uh, setting, because this is, you know, about local government innovation, uh, this is a very relevant thing to think about. Um, and one thing I think that I wanted to emphasize before we go into the, the short talks um, is that obviously you can map that again on, on some kind of a scale and it'd be interesting to explore that later in the workshop. Um, so certain local authorities might collaborate with the intention of basically just identifying and following best practice, but maybe others are more intent on actively being involved in uh, innovation and then developing new innovative solutions, right? So that's something that's quite an interesting question for me is, you know, who who are the people and why why the, why might they want to be involved in uh, more innovation and why might some others not maybe have the capacity or, or willingness to, to do that? Um, so that's something we'll explore, explore later. Um, okay, so with that in mind, if that kind of sets the context for things, I'll... Um, Move on to our first speaker, Mayan.